So this is our draft lab. It is, again, very similar to what we did before. A couple new things going on here. If you look at the shape, you can kind of think about that a little bit, how we're going to assemble it. It's, uh, it has a couple challenges to it. It also brings in the draft tool, which is an important part design um, uh, feature. So we'll be using that one. The draft tool is uh, what allows us to bend this backwards like this to, to kind of angle this all in, okay? Now the part that you don't see here that makes it a little bit more interesting is on the inside. So if I hide this right here, you can see that we have a little bit of a depression right there. And this, uh, you know, what, what, what might this product be? This, you know, maybe the whole thing could be hollow and the other is just a lid for this. So it's kind of like a unique little case, right? But we've got this depression right there. And if I bring this one back and I hide the other one, you notice that underneath here, we have the reverse. So you see what's going on is we're going to build each one of these. So a little bit more complicated model to make. And then we're going to fit them together based upon this type of peg and hole of the other one. Not as maybe you initially imagined that maybe we're going to line up these, these edge lines, you see? So I will, um, let's bring this one back and we'll start up a new product and get going. So as we've done before, we'll come up here and we will name this one Draft Lab. Probably good enough. And then we're going to add in our parts. Uh, this time I think I'll do it how we did it first. I will go ahead and go to Product Modification and I will choose New 3D Part. Add this in here and I will change this one to, um, what are we going to call this? I didn't think about that. Draft Base. How about that? And we'll go to the Instance and call that the same name, dot one. Then we can get started. So we um, open this up, open it up more. We get down here and double click on Part Body or 3D Shape. Now we're in part design. So then first, first thing to do, what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Uh, well, I want to talk about drafts, and that probably might be the main part of this video. How, how does the draft itself work? Well, to just get started, I'll pick this plane right there. I'll go to Sketcher, and I'm going to make a square, a centered rectangle, as we have so many times before now. And I'm going to make this 50 by 50. So we'll pick that edge right there. 50 by 50, exit out, and then pad it up. We'll go with 40. So now we have a cube. So here's how the draft works. If you look down along the way here, you kind of peek around, look, look in, in these areas right here, but you see this guy? Right, you see here's our edge fillet, there's our chamfer we used before, and here's the draft tool, okay? So it has a handful of things that it's gonna want from us here. So we have the faces to draft, we have neutral elements, and a thing called a pulling direction. Okay, and there could be a lot more. Notice up here we've got our different little tabs. There's other things that it can do, and I'll incorporate that into different assembly labs later, okay? So here's the gist of it. I want to take this thing, let's say, and I want to draft this face like so, okay? Then it wants a thing called a neutral element, and the neutral element is the, the face that touches this face that will not move, okay? So that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but neutral means, you know, neutral. Stays the same, right? Doesn't really change, neutral. So for example, if I were to pick in here, I gotta pick in there first, and then I pick this as the neutral element, and let's make this a little bit larger so you can see it more clearly. See what's happening here? See this, this angle right there? Watch what happens when I hit preview. You see this purple line? The purple line is, is the hinge, if you want to think of it that way. This top face here, what I meant by staying the same, this bottom 
face down here is going to get extended out, as will all of these, to match or make this angle. This one up here at the top will not change. So that's the neutral. That's their way of saying, where do you want to put this hinge right there, okay? So then if I hit OK, there's our draft. So you see it welds everything in there. Let's go ahead and we'll delete this. We'll do it again. So I come down here, I hit draft. I go, okay, well, how about if I want this, 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 and this? But if I want all of these phases, yep, that's fine. You can do that. Then for the neutral element, be careful, because if you go, okay, right there. Oh, wait, oops, now I have five elements under faces to draft. This thing here works basically the same for all of Katia. You might have noticed this already. If you pick something accidentally, just pick it again, and it deselects it, okay? Then you can go here and pick in the neutral element, pick that one, and now the hinge is going to go around the whole thing. So when I hit preview, this little skirt you see, is going to get made. It's not going to be just flat little planes like that. It's going to figure out the corners here for us. I hit OK, and now I end up with that shape, which is pretty much what we want. However, here's the thing to think about this. I made a pad based on a sketch that was 50 millimeters. What's 50 millimeters? Well, this up here is 50 millimeters. Okay. This down here is something else based upon the 20 degree angle. What if what I wanted was the base to be 50 and then I want the top to flow in wherever it goes? It's most important, let's say, to me that the base is 50 so it sits somewhere where I believe it's supposed to sit and I want the angle to be 20 degrees but I care a little less about actually what this shape is or dimensions up at the top. Okay, so let's do it again. So I'll delete this. And then I will pick the draft tool. I'll pick all those same faces again. And now the neutral element is going to be this one down here. So I tab, pick over there. But we have this problem. If I do this, it's going to go outward and open up at the top. Well, if you come here to pulling direction and you flip it, now the angle is going to go inward, okay? There's actually a little arrow, if you see it right there, that does the flipping. So watch this. You see, so that's going to cut it all in. And then this one down here, I flip around, preview it, that's going to pull it out, okay? So then after all of that is done, I hit OK, and I take a look at this, and then I realize, oops, yeah, that is not going to work. That's not what I want. So I want to reverse this a little bit. Well. This is about editing now. So I go, okay, well, uh, geez, actually I do want the top to be 50 and I want it to flare out to the bottom to whatever it goes to. Because I think, yep, you go, yep, I think that's going to be better. So rather than delete this all the time like I've been doing it, get used to the idea of, uh, kind of like when I said you accidentally select a face, right? So faces to draft, I could click, you got to click in the field first and then I could pick that and it deselects it, okay? Same with the neutral element. So I could come down here and I could say, no, I don't want that. And I could deselect it. Or a lot of times you can come in here and you can say clear selection. And then it'll just make it be nothing. You see? So if I pick that there, right click clear selection. Or I picked it and went, oh, oops, I didn't want that. Pick it again. It goes away. And then I can come up here and I can pick that. And then if I were to see that little arrow, I'm going to flip it accidentally on purpose. And I hit preview and I go, good, that's what I, uh oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, yeah, that's the pulling direction. So I flip that around, I hit that little arrow, or I hit this little arrow over here, flips it around, hit preview, the skirt comes out like that. Yes, that's what I want. Then the last thing to do for this block is to pick this face. We'll go into Sketcher and we're going to make the sketch for the pocket. Now, what I want to do maybe a little bit different here is instead of adding the centered rectangle in here and giving it a horizontal vertical direction, uh, the size of the hole. Maybe let's pretend that in this case we're worried about the wall thickness here. I don't care really about what the hole itself is. I want to make sure that there's enough material left over to, you know, do its job, let's say. 
So in this particular case, then I am going to, I can, I can do it like this. I can pick this and go to constraint. Remember now, I think it's time that I should probably call back to something here. I've been letting everybody get used to using these shortcuts, but remember that I click on the background down here and my constraints icon is actually hanging out down here at the bottom. So I, I pick constraint and then I pick this edge and then I can go to this edge right there. But notice what's happening right there. See that green dashed line? That is a projection and it's a construction element, okay? So it's okay, it's fine, it is what we want to do, but just notice that this is one of those times. I just made a link between the edge of my sketch and the edge of that part in the background, okay? So just understand that that happened. So I picked this and I'm going to make it um, five millimeters. Then I'll do the same here. I'll go the shortcut way. Now let's, let's look at this here. See this lavender purple color like this? This means that it's currently over constrained. Don't let this bother you right now because it sees that because, let's, let's talk this out, because this is a centered rectangle and it's symmetrical to itself, if I were to grab a corner of this, here, let's drop this. If I were to grab a corner of this and try to move it around, I can't move it in and out, I can move it up and down. I can't move it out because of this constraint. Remember I said it's symmetrical, so by locking this side to here, and because the center is locked in the center, this side will not move out this way either. But again, can go up and down, okay? So that means that this length right here is already defined. Whatever it is, it's already defined. So if I go here and I pick this line and I pick constraint, it turns purple saying that if you try to do this, it will be considered over constrained. Okay. Now this is okay though, because it doesn't know right now that I'm planning on picking a second element. So then I come down here and then I pick that edge right there and then everything's fine. It says, Oh, okay. I get you. You're going from that edge to that other edge. Again, there is a construction projection. Move it out here. I can make that five millimeters. And now, it's all green in my case. This is ISO constrained. So that's what we want. Okay, so we're gonna exit out of here and we're going to pocket this down just three millimeters. And that's what we're after, okay? Now the last thing um, that I'll do is, as we've been doing, let's go ahead and give this a color. And I wanted it to be a little bit different, so I chose this magenta color here before, okay? And um, that's it. Go ahead and save it, and then we'll work on the top portion.